Okay, we are back. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, with the always fabulous Andrea Kay, mm-hmm. uh, scoring a lot of points. Yeah. Uh, and the always incredible Al Arias. I thought it was interesting. Well, you're, you're incredible because you're going to do my tax return for free this year. <laughs> you're incredible because you're interesting. So How's that? Anyway, right. and we have our last guest of the day, Mr. Cole Casey from Casey and Wood. Welcome. Hi. So tell us a little bit about Casey and Wood. Uh, you can you can tell from the name it's a law firm, but it not really. So let's tell us about what you do. Sure. Our firm is a uh, kind of a boutique practice. Uh, we started off as a criminal defense firm uh, many years ago. We narrowed that down to simply defending San Diego citizens. We don't take cases anyplace outside of San Diego for uh, the, the specific crime of driving under the influence. And then we've even tailored the practice more to really – limiting our representation to those people that are our local business leaders, our local professionals, people with professional licenses, people with security clearances, people that are in law enforcement, people that are in the military that have really collateral consequences from making mm-hmm. perhaps one mistake. You know, a night out of fun with their wife or their friends has now turned into something that could literally cost them their entire career, their livelihood, and everything else. So really, our practice is sort of tailored to, to that, that market. Interesting. So tell me, I'm, I'm trying to think how to phrase this, you know, tell me why somebody wants to work with a Casey and Wood versus another law firm if, um, you know, w- w- let's get into the details of why sure. the professional designations. Well, certainly there's a, um, just like selecting any professional, whether it's an accountant, whether it's your doctor, you, you want to look to their qualifications, you look to their credentials. Um, you know, I could bore your listeners for, for a long time reading my resume, but the reality is that's really the selection process. But more importantly, what we encourage everybody to do, in fact, I encourage all of my clients when they first come in, they're scared to death. It's usually just happened to them. and They're a little bit freaked out by it. I tell them before you engage my services, make sure you speak to at least a couple others. You need to find out who most importantly to you, do you feel has your back the best? Who do you feel the most comfortable working with? And if that's the person that's got the most impressive resume. Great. If it's the person that you just say, look, I feel that this person sitting across the counter from me across the desk understands my plight better Then that's who you go with. Mm-hmm. That's, and so there's, there's no real line of demarcation that says you hire this firm for that reason. It's just, you got to go with, with, as you would any other decision that you make in life. You, who do you feel the most comfortable with when you're being honest with yourself? Although right. it certainly seems to make sense to me that someone who specializes in something is going to have, and that's their core competency, is probably going to do better than somebody who's trying to be a jack of all trades. Well, that's always been our mission. That's always been my message. Has um, when I when I began to, to specialize just in this area, it was there was an old phrase that was told to me many years ago and said, "Do one thing." do it better than everyone else and they'll line up at your door. And that was my endeavor. I had read a book when I was in law school that was called The Man to See. It was about a a very famous lawyer from Washington, D.C. named uh, Edward Bennett Williams. He used to be the owner of the Washington Redskins for Mm -hmm. many years. And um, that was my mission was to be, quote, the man to see when it came to this particular type of crime. And I didn't at the time I did this 20 years ago, there really wasn't very many, there weren't very many people doing what I was doing. Now, <laughs> there's a tremendous amount, and that's good, but we've always made it our mission to sort of rise above everybody else and say we keep a very limited practice, we keep a very exclusive practice. That ensures the people that do engage our services get one-on-one with us, and we work our tails off to make sure that their life isn't destroyed by perhaps making one mistake. Yeah, that's great. You know, we were talking uh, before we went on air about one of your uh, more uh, famous clients, uh, uh, was it uh, Vincent Jackson that you're able to talk about? It was, yeah. Many so tell us the story. Well, obviously, many of the clients that we have um, that are influentials in the community don't want their matters discussed. Uh, but yes, I, I was Vince's lawyer. Vince and I have remained friends. Uh, he's off in, in Tampa doing wonderful things right now. And Unfortunately, but, yeah. I did not want to see him leave the Chargers. No. He's, he's still a, he's a good friend. Um, I was at his wedding, and his, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was an interesting Oh, he's thing. married? Yes. I didn't know. He Sorry, is. lady. He is, and he has, has, <laughs> he has since... Uh, hmm, dang it. And he has two little boys now, too, oh, as okay. well. So he's, uh, Vince is a good guy. But we, um, we've stayed friends, and um, it was, you know, it was complicated because it was his, not his first time and you know the question is always asked just like when we hear the celebrities you know getting around look you have all this money why didn't you hire a driver of course well I could say that about probably 90% of my clients they tend to be quite successful they could easily afford an uber or a 
but you just don't. And the difference in my type of the type of quote unquote crimes that I defend people on is they didn't set out to do it at the beginning of the evening. Nobody, I, I've never met a client that says, here's an idea. I'm going to get liquored up tonight. I'm going to go drive home. That's what I, that's, I'm planning on doing. Right. That. You know, now that you say that somebody's going to go out and do yeah, that. Tonight. Yeah. So let's don't get your phone number out you, there. Okay? Don't call me if you do. I don't want that. Client. But, but that's, that's typically what happens. So, and with Vince's case, um, it was, uh, there were some complicating factors. And then the, the worst part about it is while his case was pending, when you when you get arrested for a DUI, the DMV takes action against you and they immediately yank your license. It was the Jets Chargers playoff game. Okay, it was the, the first round of the playoffs. The Jets were here in town and I had everybody over at my house. We had the TV on. Everyone's in their Chargers jersey. And at 1215, my phone is ringing. Okay, the game, the kickoffs at 130. My cell phone. It's Vincent Jackson. And he's being pulled. He had gotten pulled over on the way in for having a suspended license. A, an officer said his music was too loud. An officer that was, let's be honest, conveniently sitting right outside oh, the sure. stadium, the player's entrance, knows what kind of car he drives, and he pulls him over for that. And we had, I had to get on the phone with the sergeant at that point and say, look, you know, He's got a ball game to play. Can we here. table this later? Was like yeah, what you yeah. said pretty much. Yeah. And so and you, anyway, that that was very confusing because as I'm sitting with all my friends getting ready to watch the game, here's my cell phone with his name popping up on it. It's like, aren't you supposed to be on the field right now? Aren't you supposed to be warming up? But all's well that ends well. He came out of it very well. We got in front of a very, uh, we got in front of probably the only judge in San Diego that's not a football fan. He's, like, <laughs> he's a European soccer fan, as am I. So we had a lot to talk about, yeah. but he's like, I really don't know much about this guy. And so at the end of the day, Vince ended up coming out of it very well. And, um, and unless I said, I'm, I'm proud to still call him a friend and we keep in touch. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Now, how was it that he was able to, to come out well? Because my perception is the law is what it is, and if you're if you're convicted, then here is what the punishment is. Like, there's not a whole lot of gray area in this situation. Well, and, Where and, am I wrong? And it, well, you're not wrong. In many cases, it's not the punishment it, that's the issue. It's what's the NFL going to do to you? What's the medical board going to do to you? What's the state yeah. bar going oh. to do to you? What's the chief of police going to do to you? Ah. It's okay if I take my lumps. And, and admit that I did something wrong here, what's going to happen to me down the road? What's the pharmacy board going to do to me? What's the nursing board? What's the FAA going to do to my pilot's license? Mm. Those are the people that gotcha. he represents. So it really, yeah. you know, I get this at cocktail parties all the time. You know, how can you try to get these people off? Most of the time, not always, most of the time, you're not trying to, quote, get them out. You're not trying to say they didn't do it. There certainly are those cases where you say, look, the evidence just isn't there. And those are the cases that end up in front of juries and you let an honest jury make that decision. But for the most part, the clients that come to me, the, 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 the professionals, the CEOs, the CFOs, they're like, I don't want to be on a tri- in a trial. I don't want the media covering this. I just need some help with my board of directors, with my professional license, with whatever the case may right. be. And that's really where our role dovetails from just being the, quote, defense attorneys into actually managing the entire issue for the client until it's completely sorted out for them. Yeah. Gotcha. You're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business here on KFSD AM 1450, a Bloomberg radio station, streaming live on the web at financialnewsandtalk.com. Give us a tweet at Close Up SD or find our page on Facebook. We want to hear from you. I'm your host, Barry Waxler. Here my co-host, Andrea Kay and Urban Miaris, and our guest is Mr. Cole Casey from Casey and Wood. So it has to be um, – it changes the game a lot when you have somebody – of high profile public versus somebody who's protecting their li- their their license or their yeah. their registration what have you well and I have had cases, I, as I said earlier, I rarely take cases um, outside of San Diego anymore, but I used to, and I took, I had the case of the, I won't use his name, but the former CEO of a very, shall we say, popular coffee company based out of the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> and that um, happened um, out mm. in, yeah, that happened out in, um, in Palm Springs, and you want to talk about the issue of being the biggest fish in the smallest pond, oh, yeah. so what should have just been a routine court appearance, we showed up and there was media a mile long down the block and you know of course i had my client with me and we were, were being driven by somebody and we just said you turn you turn get out of here i will just go in and i you know didn't want him to have to face the press he wanted to come into court until we saw this because you know this is a guy that was business week's ceo of the year oh, sure. harvard business yeah. school man of the year all that he, he didn't need the public exposure right. to be Googled and to have his name pop up every time. But we're all about the National Enquirer stories in America right now, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, there there has to be some impact also if if you stepped outside of San Diego County courtrooms, the you know the the um, uh, mix between the judicial system in another county versus here, you know, there's little clicks going on out there, isn't there? We call it getting home courted. Yes, yeah. of course. And uh, over the years, as a young lawyer, as you come up. You know, you're taking them anywhere they want you. You're going, you're driving, you're putting 50,000 miles on your car. But as you develop your practice, you're, I was at least able to kind of concentrically narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down to where you're really taking the cases. I have, I have a, a double level of inquiry. The first question is, does the client need my help? If this is a, you know, no disrespect, but if this is a kid sitting on his couch in PB saying, bummer, dude, I got a DUI, he doesn't need me. But the second question is, if they do need me, can I help them? Is there something that I can actually do for them? And if those answers are yes, then we'll accept the case. But I won't take them out of county very often for that very reason. You get, you're right. You get home courted a little yeah. bit. It's not too bad, but it, yeah, it does I've, still happen. I've seen that happen a bunch of times. Yep. Well, we're starting to run short on time. Tell our listeners how they can find out more about you and your company. Uh, the website is duisandiego.com. Really easy to remember, www.duisandiego. We also have a Facebook page, which is Casey and Wood, W-O-O-D. Um, find us either one of those two places. And uh, hopefully you don't get in trouble. But if you do, um, if you need that type of representation, um, give us a call. Great. Well, thanks for being with us. You are listening to Close Up on San Diego Business, where we find the best and brightest businesses in San Diego and the many special people that work hard to make a difference in our community. If you're interested in being a guest on our show or just want to follow us, come to our website at closeupsandiego.com. You can send us a tweet at closeupsd or find us on uh, Facebook. For uh, Andrea, Urban, Al, and myself, until next Thursday, have a great weekend. Stay awesome, San Diego. 